Hey there Western and welcome to Fuss in the Bus. This is the senatorial talk show dedicated to all things Western and all things you. My name is Patrick Sorrell, I'm one of your senators, and welcome to the final episode of the first season of Fuss in the Bus. This talk show has had a great season, and over the past year we've talked about a lot of different things that affected you as Western students, albeit the bus strike, the USC elections, or all the policies and new programs that have been passed through Senate. So we're looking forward to another season next year, where we're going to talk about a few of the things that have happened since our last episode. Now if you remember at our last episode, we had all the USC presidential candidates on. And so a big shout out and congratulations to Mike Dillingrod, the new USC president. So we're going to first start off by talking about some of the new programs and courses available at Western. We're also going to talk about the 24-7 library. And I hit the libraries to talk to students about how they feel about the new initiative. And then we're also going to talk about the UW budget and make this episode really, really short. So if you are still studying, you're not taking too much of a break. So, the new programs at Western. This is really, really exciting. At Brescia, there's an introduction of an honor specialization in families and communities. In engineering, there's an introduction of a mechatronic systems engineering program. I have no idea what, me what mechatronic is, but I'm sure engineers do, so congrats to that. Uh, at the Faculty of Music, there's a guaranteed admission to music education graduates of the University of Western Ontario Faculty of Education. So that means if you're studying music education at music, you have an opportunity to get concurrent education, meaning you'll get straight into Teachers College at Western, so that's really exciting. Um, at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, there's a major in Museum and Curatorial Studies, and also at the Faculty of Social Science, they've teamed up with the Richard Ivey School of Business to present a cool module, which is an honors degree in Political Science and Business Admin. So if that interests you, check out the Ivey website or the Social Science website. At Huron, there's an honors specialization in Psychology, and for the Faculty of Information and Media Studies and Continuing Studies at Western, there's a brand new diploma in Marketing. So if that interests you, check that out. We're also going to talk about a few courses that have to be withdrawn. And it happens sometimes just because there's not enough students actually in the program. So that goes for the Faculty of Science. There's a withdrawal of honor specialization in Science and Education. So if you're in that program, it's no longer existing in about four years. But don't worry if you're in it right now. Also, at King's there was a withdrawal of minor of the minor in population studies, so that's not also going to be existing, but if you're in it right now, you're fine. So with that said, um, it is exam period, it's just wrapping up right now, so I decided to hit the libraries because there's a brand new initiative here at Western about the 24-hour libraries. Weldon has it and King's has it. So I talked to the students at both of those libraries to see what their reactions are to this student-run initiative. So let's check that out. Councils across Western have supported 24-hour library service this exam period. I'm here to talk to students on both sides of the bridge about whether or not they believe that this initiative has been successful and whether or not it should be continued in years to come. So let's check it out. So have you used the 24-hour library? Yes, I have. I've, uh, usually I do stay here past 2 or around 2 but not past that, but I'll come early in the morning, so it's useful to just have the library available at all times, but I haven't like been here all 24 hours a day, so it's useful. And how about yourself? I have used the 24-hour library just before my exams, but other than that, no, I haven't. So do you think it should be an initiative that should be carried on in years to come, and do you think it should be funded by the students? I do not think it should be funded by the students. It's a great thing that the students can take advantage of. I love having a place to be able to come to that's great to work in uh, right before my exam. So I think it should continue. So have you used the 24-hour library? Yes. In what capacity? Um, I used it before an exam, before a 9 o'clock exam. I was here at like 4 in the morning. <laughs> so do you think that this initiative should be carried on by the students or do you think that the university should uh, be the ones continuing on this initiative? The university. Yeah, how come? because I think it's their responsibility that we can have a place to study uh, at any time during the night or day. Um, I have not used the 24 hours. Um, the only thing, I think for hours, I think that 8 to 2 is pretty good. I don't think you need to stay up um, into the wee hours of the morning to study. I think sleeping is important for studying. Um, but I would say that open earlier is probably good because some classes start at 8.30 and I remember coming just before 8 and the library not being open and that sucks. Great. So have you been using the 24-hour library since it's opened after 2 a.m.? Absolutely. Before every exam till 2 or 3 in the morning at least. Yeah? And yourself? Yep. I've been using it quite a lot. <laughs> 
Do you think that uh, it is something that should be continued in future years? Do you think that the hours should be shorter, longer? What do you think it should be? I think it's definitely something that's useful because 2 a.m. is just too early to go home sometimes if you're on a roll. But maybe if you cut it off at like 4 or 5 o'clock because there really isn't anyone here between 5 and 8 in the morning generally. Agreed. <laughs> Um, I believe it should be funded by the university um, just because we do pay student fees already to attend school that they should provide the service for us, especially during the time of exams because that's when students have seen it. But I personally have used the 24-hour library. I feel like my brain stops functioning after a certain time and it wouldn't be necessary. So have you been using the 24-hour library since it's been open after 2 a.m.? I have. I was actually here until 4 a.m. last night, so it's come in handy. Me. Do you think uh, it's an initiative that should be continued in further years? Absolutely. Even the 2 a.m. cap is a little too early, so I think 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m. is um, is awesome to be here, especially if you have two exams in one day, so it's great. Do you think that the uh, initiative should be funded through the school, or do you think it should be like a student council funded initiative? Um, both. I think like it's it's great to have something um, provided by the students, but I think it's been so successful this year that it should be more of a school um, fun initiative as well. So <laughs> thanks for watching Fuss. 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 On the bus. So welcome back. So we want to know whether or not you've been using the 24-hour library. So all you got to do is email us at fussbus at gmail.com. So the two different policies that have passed during Senate in the past few months really affect students, and so I want to report on them right now. So the first one is, we've been talking about the Remember State policy since I believe September, our first episode. And so know it that next year on Remember State, students have an opportunity to be excused from class, no matter what type of class it is, to attend the ceremony. And also, professors will have to also do the two minutes of silence during the 11th to 12th hour. So with that in mind, make sure you tell your professors and your deans well in advance if you're not going to be in attendance on Remember State. The second thing is, if you remember, we had Ray Park on earlier this year, and he was talking about the midterm exam policy. So whether or not if you had more than three midterm exams within 23 hours, um, and how the policy currently works for exams is if you have three within 23 hours, then you can get an exemption and have one deferred. So that same thing is going to be extended to midterm exams as well. And so if you check out the sidebar on this YouTube page, you'll see the full policy statement, all the information that you need to know about the midterm policy. So that's a great student push Senate initiative. So just keep that in mind if you have that happening to you next year with your midterms. And also remember, if you do have three within 23 hours exams, like final exams, you can also get those deferred. Okay, so we just wanted to give you that heads up. Finally, uh, the UW budget has been passed, so that's really exciting. So with regards to that, I highlight two different things that you might want to keep in mind. If you're an international student, your tuition will be going up, and if you're a student that's from Canada, your student, your tuition will be going up anyways. So with that said, if you are a domestic student, your tuition will increase based on the government framework. So that just basically means whatever the government says, Western will reflect. But if you're an international undergraduate student, there'll be a 6% 6 increase if you're coming to Western. So if you're watching this, hi, um, and you're not at Western yet, but if you're already at Western, there's going to be a 3% increase. And if you're in HBA and you're an international student, it's going to be a 3% increase to start HBA, but if you're already in HBA, there won't be an increase to you uh, if you're an international student. So heads up about that. And so finally, uh, moving around, if you're an MIT, once the brand new Ivy Building is completed, you're going to be moving to the old Ivy Building. And science, if you're in science, you'll be moving to the North Campus Building once Ivy moves out. So, so moving around with the brand new buildings, lots of happening, lots of change happening in September. So it's a really exciting time of year. And uh, now with the budget passed, uh, there's a lot of new projects that can be passed as well. So that's about it. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has watched the episodes uh, on YouTube for the past year. It's been a really exciting year. And thank you to all of my guests, especially those in the library who I kind of just walked up and asked if they would like to be on the show. Also, I just want to give out a shout out to the person who named the show. Uh, her name is Jen Miller, and she was the one who came up with Fuss and the Bus as the idea of a title. So shout out to Jen Miller. But that sums it up for me. Thank you for joining me this past year. I look forward to next year. Lots of more interactive opportunities for you to get involved with the Senate. And uh, that sums it up for me. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining me here on Fuss and the Bus.